New laws have come into effect in the American state of Georgia which allow guns in bars, nightclubs, libraries and even churches. It's said to be the most extreme version of so-called guns everywhere legislation in America. From Georgia, Sky's US correspondent Amanda Walker reports. Hello. How's everybody? Hey. A celebration of one of the most radical pro-gun measures in America. For these enthusiasts, Georgia's so-called guns everywhere law is a triumph. Well, it's, it's a victory for the Second Amendment rights, and that, of course, is the, gun, the right to keep and bear arms. Rights that are protected by the Constitution and given to us by God. I know when I go to church now, I don't have to leave my weapon uh, in the car or at home. I intend to drink a glass of whiskey when I get back to the house. But uh, In celebration. In, in celebration. Last decade, Georgia saw over twice as many people killed by guns than in combat in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Not everyone in the state is so happy about the new law. Athens, Georgia, a liberal oasis in what's now one of the most gun-friendly states in America. Before the new law, guns wouldn't be allowed anywhere near this bustling library so popular with young families. But now, because it's classed as an unsecured government building, you can walk in here armed with your weapon on full display. And if you have a problem with that, there's very little you can do about it. Uh, it's a place of learning. It's a place of peace. It's not a place for firearms. I think if someone were to walk in right now with a shotgun, then, you know, we're, we're going to start wondering, what, what are we doing, you know, really? Uh, why, why, is, why is that reasonable? For these parents, firearms and nursery rhymes simply don't mix. Now it's something where everybody you look at, you're concerned about what, what they could possibly be carrying with them. If someone comes in with a gun, I'm leaving is basically how I feel about it. But gun activist Bob Thornton welcomes the bill. He says he has the right to protect himself wherever he goes, be it a bar or a library. And if the library doesn't want people to come into the library armed, then all they have to do is have someone stationed there to prevent armed persons from going into the library. They say they don't have the budget for that. Well, then they are leaving it by, by definition. They are leaving my personal safety to me. The worry for many Georgians is that things will go the way of Texas, where activists have been brazenly flexing their own open carry rights by publicly parading their assault rifles. Opposition to gun-friendly laws may be simmering, but people certainly aren't taking to the street to protest against them. In the face of continued mass shootings, this law is proof that the all-powerful gun lobby's influence is as strong as ever. Amanda Walker, Sky News, Georgia. Well, joining us now from Smyrna in Georgia is the gun store owner, Jay Wallace. And uh, from Birmingham, England, uh, we're joined by Scott Lucas, Professor of American Studies at the University of Birmingham. Thank you both uh, for being with us. Uh, Mr Wallace, uh, undoubtedly uh, this is being seen as a victory for the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Do you also accept that the consequence is going to be if guns are carried more freely to more places, more people are going to end up getting shot? Now, I disagree with that because of uh, gun owners are, are the most responsible uh, people, I would say, in our state, especially those that have, uh, have concealed uh, carry permits. They've gone through background checks, and that's, that's just not going to be the issue. But if you don't have guns, people can't get shot. If you do have guns, uh, they can get shot, even in church. Well, yeah, that's true, but that also goes for the bad guys that are there, you know. Do we want to take ourselves back to infancy to where we, we ha have to look to our mother to protect us? Uh, and that's the way that we would be because uh, the police cannot be everywhere. And there are those that would always, since the original sin, that would do harm to, uh, to man. So uh, that's something that we need. 
Uh, Mr. Lucas, you're now in Britain where we find this kind of free availability of guns difficult to understand. Can you explain it to us as a student of American culture? Well, not just a student of American culture, my family are from north of Atlanta in Georgia. And uh, so I grew up around there. And you just have this culture, and Mr. Wallace expressed it very well, if uh, guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. Uh, there's a mistaken interpretation of the Constitution that it gives the rights to bear arms to everybody. It doesn't. It gives the rights to arm militias, but not to arm yourself. But these myths sort of grow up, and then you get this culture of fear. And Mr. Wallace expressed it very well. Those bad guys could be anywhere. They could be in our churches. They could be in our libraries. And so what you have is the idea that America has to be a garrison state, like a fortified state, uh, despite the fact that all the evidence shows that if you have more guns in a society in the U.S., you'll have more deaths by accidents, you'll have more deaths by uh, deliberate shootings, and that the vast majority of people will know the person who killed them, not some unknown random assailant. Uh, Mr. Wallace, have you ever had to use a gun on a, on a bad guy? Uh, no, I have not. I have never had to. But see, what he's not, what he's not stating is that we're not making a requirement for everyone to carry a firearm. But the beauty of it is, is the bad guy doesn't know what someone looks like that's carrying a firearm. So you know, even though you choose not to have a firearm, you still are protected by those that do. But if you're carrying an assault weapon over your shoulder, everyone can see you've got that, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. If you were carrying an assault weapon on your shoulder, everyone could see it. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that's more of the emotion of the anti-gun folks that try to push their agenda. The Supreme Court has already addressed the militia issue as far as the Second Amendment. And it's not just for the militia, it's for the freedom-loving individual in this country. Uh, Mr. Lucas, you, you were saying there that you believe there is uh, clear evidence that prevalence of guns leads to prevalence of people getting shot. Uh, just how convinced are you? Because as you heard Mr. Wallace saying, he's saying gun owners are very responsible. Oh, certainly there are many gun owners who are responsible, but there are many gun owners who unintentionally wind up shooting somebody because they think it might be a bad guy or because they get into a heated argument with somebody else. I mean, the simple fact is, is that in a recent year, in a country like the United States, before even the more liberal gun laws, you had uh, 24,000 people killed by violence, by guns, the vast majority, again, by someone they knew. In Britain, the equivalent number was 71. So in other words, what Mr. Wallace is advocating is a society where you have an increase basically by about 40 times the number of deaths because you have un unrestricted guns as opposed to having a regulated system. Now, that's quite a lot to have on your conscience, isn't it, Mr. Wallace? Well, I'd say that a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the figures that are touted by the anti-gun folks are, are exaggerated and uh, they're not actually true. Uh, I, I can't speak on the exact figure that he just spoke of because uh, that'd be something to have to be looked into. But uh, many times, many times, more than not, it's a very exaggerated figure. You know, freedom is not free. So we have to uh, conduct ourselves in a proper way as individuals. We want to live as individuals and have individual freedom. That's important to us. If one extra person were killed because of the freedom uh, to carry weapons, would that be a price worth paying? Well, it's like with anything else, uh, you know, like one of the things that they talk about as far as like people carrying firearms into uh, restaurants that serve alcohol, the most dangerous thing is the parking lot outside the, the bar. So if you were to worry about everything that happens to everybody, you know, how far will we go to protect ourselves from ourselves? Do we want to be like a school of fish in the ocean that just swim and say we're willing to lose a few just so we can feel better about ourselves? And that's exactly the way it works. I want to be a person that can protect myself if it happens to be and I'll, and I'll be ready if, if, if it happens and he wants to be a person that cannot protect himself and just wants to be a statistic. Mr. Wallace and Mr. Lucas thank you both very much indeed for joining us.